It's our first title fight, the WBA Super Featherweight Championship. You know, Roger Gutierrez is making the second defense of his WBA 130-pound world title. Now, tonight, he'll face the unbeaten Hector Garcia, who shocked everyone when only two-week notice, he knocked down and beat Chris Colbert back in February right here on Showtime. You know, Garcia, he entered the ring against Colbert as a virtual unknown and a 20-to-1 underdog. Now he's ranked in the top 10, getting his first world title shot. Now, he used to be trained by the legendary Cuban Ismael Salas, now trained by Bob Santos. You see them right next to him. And with a victory tonight, Garcia will become just the fourth Dominican world titleist ever at 130 pounds. Joining Joan Guzman, Javier Fortuna, and Arjenis Mendez. And Roger Gutierrez, well, he's 2-0 in world title fights, and this is the second time he's defending his WBA strap. He was originally scheduled to fight Chris Cover back in February, contracted COVID, had to pull out two weeks before the fight. Hector Garcia replaced him and scored the upset over Colbert. Well, Gutierrez hasn't fought in a year. He told us he doesn't see anything special in Hector Garcia. Champion says he's fought better, stronger fighters, and the only thing Garcia is walking out of the ring with is a loss. So with that, Al, let's go to the tell of the tape. <laughs> yeah, these numbers are, you know, strikingly similar. And there's not that much to choose from. Obviously, Garcia is the lefty, but I think the number that is important is one you referenced, Brian, and that is that layoff of Roger Gutierrez. Will that have an impact on his performance here tonight? Garcia has fought twice in that time. And we look at the rules, and a reminder that now, in this fight, there is no three-knockdown rule, and it will be that way for the rest of the evening, the, the other rules consistent with the unified rules. Let's get the official introduction from Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Well, fans, from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida, Premier Boxing Champions presents the first of our world title attractions on Showtime Championship Boxing. And it is sanctioned by the WBA, President Herberto Jesus Mendoza, and the supervisor Renzo Bagnariol. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, all from the state of Florida, Fred Flutie, Alexander Levin and Michael Ross. And introducing our referee in charge of the action, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Frank Gentile. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, hailing from San Juan de la Maguana in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at the super featherweight limit of 130 pounds, a 2016 Olympian. He is undefeated in his campaign in the professional ranks with a record of 15 wins, no losses, three no contests with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the Southpaw Challenger. Tonight making his first attempt at a world title, here is the undefeated WBA number one ranked super featherweight world contender, introducing Hector Luis, El Androide Garcia. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold and purple trim, and hailing from Maracaibo, Venezuela. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 130 pounds even. With a record of 26 wins, three losses in one draw, he has 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his Showtime debut and the second defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning WBA Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Roger the Kid Gutierrez. Once again, referee in charge, Frank 
Gentile now to give instructions. 12 rounds of championship boxing scheduled. Anything below here, I'm going to call. Remember, stop breaking box. Listen to my commands. This is a world title fight. Any questions? Any questions? Touch them up. Good luck. Good luck. Frank Gentile is the third man in the ring. He's got 21 years of experience. This will be his 578th professional bout. And in football, that's a false start. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be busy with football yes. very shortly in the college variety. Yeah. <laughs> this is for the WBA Super Featherweight Strap. The champion in the purple trunks and the gold trim. The challenger, the unbeaten Garcia, the red trunks, the white trim. So it's been seven fights since Gutierrez has faced a lefty, and he's got two wins as a lefty as a pro, but they've come against much lesser opposition to Garcia. One of them was 0-2, but he says he sparred with a lot of lefties, did so even when he was getting for Colbert, get ready for Colbert because Colbert switches a lot. Mm -hmm. He ate a left hand yeah. from Garcia. And he ate another one. Another one. Seems like he's really going to dissect with that left hand at Garcia. And Garcia got off to a very good start against Colbert. He wants to try and do that tonight. Hey, hey, hey. Keep him up. Keep him up. A quick little warning. Telling Garcia to keep his punches up. And it was a calm confidence that Garcia had all this week. He told all of us, hey, I'm going to win this fight. I don't care what anyone says or what the champion says. I'm here to win it. Yeah, he looks pretty uh, loose. He looks pretty relaxed in there, establishing that jab. And like I said, dissecting with the left hand. He's changing it up, throws it up top, throws it to the body. See, a lot of left-handers are scared to throw that left hand to the body because they feel you're going to get hit by that right, right yeah. hand. But if you position yourself right, you get that foot on the outside, you're not going to get hit. You're not. Here's the right hand by Gutierrez. Yeah, and that's his calling card. The big question in this fight is can Garcia avoid that punch and do enough to get in, work to the body, work to the head, uh, and we're going to find that out. Under a minute here in round one. Another right hand by Gutierrez to the chest of Garcia. And Garcia comes back with a one-two. Oh, head back. Head, and he yeah. clashed heads. That's, That's, what happens. That's what happens. That's what happens. A lefty and a right, especially if you lunge like Garcia did. Keep your head on the swivel, because both of these guys can punch. Yes. And you almost get the feeling we're waiting to see what the Gutierrez right hand or Garcia left, left hand. It's yeah. <laughs> a close round. Mm -hmm. We'll look at what these fighters need to do to win this fight. We'll start with Roger Gutierrez. Control the distance, uh, not allow Garcia to get on the inside. And don't lean in because when you do that, Garcia can attack you. The right hand, we talked about it. Many of his 20 knockouts have come with that big right hand. Now, uh, you know, against Colbert, he walked in without even having to throw the jab, Garcia. But tonight, he'll need to jab his way in. And, uh, you know, he's not always dedicated to doing body work, but I think tonight it could be important for him. And while, we, yes, the left, straight left hand could be big, the right hook of Garcia is also a power punch. My piece. You know, Hector Garcia was a 2016 Olympian. Fought for the Dominican Republic. Had over 300 amateur fights. Yeah. I mean, decorated amateur. 
a lot of international. Yeah, but nobody fights. really knew him because he was uh, fought in the Dominican Republic. You know, when he beat Colbert, he shocked the world. Yeah, a couple of good left hands by Garcia. Garcia normally lands 43% of his power punches, which is everything other than the jab and against Colbert, he even landed 45%. And to your point, Raul, isn't it amazing in this sport how you can advance in the sport of boxing just like that? You know, you get a good win, boom, you shoot right up the rankings. I know we always hear that, but you're only as good as your last fight. And that's <laughs> exactly what happened. You know, it surprises me that Gutierrez said he was going to box more, but he is welcome and Garcia in a toe-to-toe -to -toe match. He's standing in front of him. Yeah, not a lot of lateral movement no, from Gutierrez. No. And he's not using his jab. He's not using it to find that long range, like trying to control the range. No, he's he's, he's going at toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Garcia, which I don't I don't think that's the right thing to do, especially early on it's with good. a guy like uh, Garcia. Yeah, there's a counter there by Gutierrez. It's Garcia throws, you see Gutierrez throw that one, too. One thing Garcia has not done, which he did very effectively against Colbert, and that is get Gutierrez against the ropes. Double, triple jab by Garcia, then left hand. This fight has been a little bit more of a chess match, mm -hmm. though, than I thought it might be. I thought we might have seen already outbursts of a lot of action. Not yet. I like the way Garcia, you see here, is bobbing and moving just, just a little bit. We talked about it in, in Brandon Lee's fight, but Garcia doesn't just step. He's in front of him, but he, when he moves forward, you, you see some little fades, a little movement, a little pop here and there. It, it just makes it harder for Gutierrez to land the shots. Punches by both guys. Final 30 seconds here of the second round. There's a right hand by Gutierrez. He tried to sneak that one in. Mm -hmm. A calling jab by Garcia. Let's talk about some Dominican boxing history with our boxing historian himself, Steve Farhood. Gus, it's a big night for Dominican boxing, and we take a look at some notable, these are all former world champs. In the case of uh, Fortuna and Rosario, fighters who remain active. But it was really Teo Cruz who announced the arrival of top shelf fighters from the DR. He was the first Dominican world champion. He thrown the great lightweight champ, Carlos Ortiz, in 1968. And then more recently, we've seen Joan Guzman, a two-time division, two-division champ, who developed on Showbox, as well as Fortuna and Rosario, who was formerly a unified champ at 154. So tonight, we have Alberto Pueyo and Hector Garcia hoping to make a bit of Dominican history for themselves. You're right, Garcia and Pueyo, best of friends. Spent the entire training camp together, living with Bob Santos. Yeah, and this is the first time two Dominican fighters have fought for a world title on the same card. You know, our Jim Gray is probably why he's a Hall of Fame, maybe astute observation. He says, is Garcia is the only fight guys with colored hair? <laughs> no, because of Colbert. <laughs> yeah, was it pink hair? I think I he had know, yeah. yeah. Chris Colbert has been known to change his hair color just a couple of times. And uh, yeah, I, I, did, I don't remember Gutierrez having multicolored or colorful hair. <laughs> you can see Garcia going to the body of Gutierrez. There's a right hook upstairs. Now, for a moment, uh, Gutierrez was against the ropes, and he wisely got out. But Garcia, who landed 87% of his punches, who landed at the head against Colbert, I thought he needed a little more body work tonight. And guess what? He's doing it. How about Gutierrez, Raul? I mean, he, he seems like steady, like, okay, I'm just trying to land this right hand as opposed to being a little more active. Yeah, he's spending too much time thinking. He's trying to admire his work. He lands the right hand, then he waits. 
He's going to land more of those right hands. I mean, how do you beat a left-hander? Right hands and left hooks. And he's not doing it. You see uh, Garcia really using that jab and giving Gutierrez a buffet of left hands. I mean, he's throwing the left hand over the top, to the stomach, to the chest. He changes it up. You know, in the last fight against Rene Alvarado, the third of their trilogy, which he won, Gutierrez, in his first title defense, he was behind on all those scorecards by the middle of the fight, but he had a really good comeback. Here's another left hand by Garcia. It backs up the champion. And another one to the body. And you can see Gutierrez complaining. Yeah, well, I don't think, you know, Garcia did that intentionally. It just, it just happens. It, they get close, and Garcia's a, a lefty, and especially if you lean forward. As a matter of fact, Gut Gutierrez is the one that's causing the hippos, because he's the one that's leaning in. Look, you see, he leans in, yeah, and that's going to cause Gutierrez to stop cut. him with an uppercut. Yeah. yeah, by Garcia, in a combination by Hector Garcia. Gutierrez is very tense, very tight. He needs to loosen up and let his punches go. And, and you see that in Garcia. Look how relaxed he is. Look, look at the way he's using the ring. He moves to the right, to the left, busy with his jab. You know, Al pointed out, he looked, you know, the champion's been out for a year, the longest layoff of his career. You think that has something to do with it? Yeah, that could be. But it's good that you brought that up again. And, you know, it, it, it could be having an impact on him. Big round for Garcia. Everything is perfect. Nothing Everything is perfect. Things. Keep going the same way. But a little more jabs. I do want you to put a little more jabs. Faint a little bit and keep working with the jab. And then everything is perfect. Let me get the towel here. The towel! Let's go. You have to throw more. You have to throw more. You can't give him the fight. You gotta, I'm telling you, keep throwing more. The jab and then the right. Two, two jabs and then you come with the right, with the hard right. Come on, everybody's looking at you. Let's go. This is round four of this WBA Super Featherweight title fight. The champion, Roger Gutierrez, making the second defense against the unbeaten challenger, Hector Garcia, in the red trunks. Mario Morales' trainer, uh, Gutierrez' trainer, frustrated and worried that his man could be giving away these early rounds. He's generally a guy who averages about 56 punches a round, and he has not been that no. That's a good point. It's, it's been, it, his volume has been extremely low in this fight. Well, that's because uh, Garcia's keeping him off, off balance yeah. with, with his jab and his left hands and his, his movement. Garcia just doesn't come forward. You see, he attacks at an angle. Doesn't stay too much in front of Gutierrez. Gutierrez is a late bloomer. He won seven straight fights since losing two in a row. Uh, two of those were big upsets. So he kind of resurrected his career. Then went on to win the title. He's defended it once. So at 27, he feels this is an important stage in his career. And this fight's a big one for him. Well, especially in this weight division at 130 yeah. pounds. Obviously, Shakur Stevenson is right there at the top. I mean, he's the unified champ. But look, you got a belt and you... You get wins like this, now you can really establish yourself as the number two guy in this division, in a division that, I mean, let's quite, quite frankly, is not that deep. No, it's a, you're right. This is not a, there's not a lot of depth here, and so you, want, you can take control of a division like this, and both these men trying to do that. There's another left hand up top by Garcia. A couple of feints by Gutierrez. This is actually the first round for a while that Gutierrez is throwing more punches than Garcia, so he's got that going at least. Watch back here. Watch back here. That was a, they're nearly 
rabbit punch there by Garcia, the back of the head of the champion. Uh oh, there's a right hand, and the referee Frank Gentile says no, not a knockdown. Thirty seconds here, round four. Left hand to the jaw. Ooh. Another big left hand by Garcia. Pops the head back of the champion. Man, Garcia really found finding that distance to land those big shots in this round. This was where Garcia would go down to the mat, but it was because the legs were tangled. That right hand didn't quite get there, uh, and the referee uh, appropriately not calling that a, a knockdown. And then later on in the round, uh, Garcia got that straight left hand going, landed two beauties there, and had Gutierrez kind of off balance. In a round that was very, very close, was that enough to tip it for Garcia? Who knows? Oh, guys, yeah, good work by Garcia. Good rounds, good rounds. Just keep going the way you are. Don't keep, don't change anything. Just keep going. Here's round five. And if you're the champion in those purple trunks, gold trim, you got to start stepping on the gas. Yeah, I, I agree with you, uh, Brian. Uh, the kid Gutierrez is, is just, he's waiting too much. I don't know if he's just looking for one home run punch. Yeah, he's been less active uh, than he would like to be in this fight. There's no question. I mean, look, he's sitting back like he's waiting for Garcia to lunge in and him land that, that missile right there with the right hand, but can't let too many rounds go by without throwing punches. Before you know it, you're down three or four rounds, then you got to catch up. Well, as we pointed out, oh, oh. another left hand to the body. See, that's what I'm talking about. Gutierrez, he keeps waiting. The more he waits, he's going to keep getting hit with those left hands. And the power punches, you can see the advantage for Garcia. It's everything other than the jab. See, but now you see Garcia, look, when he throws that left hand or that jab, he, he moves to his left hand. He keeps circling, circling around Gutierrez. Doesn't, doesn't stand right in front of him. So Gutierrez is not in a position to land that right hand. He's, he's got to move at an angle to try to land. And it makes it more difficult. That's the whole key when, when you're a left-hander, you find a right-handed foot position, and who's going to take control of that? And so far, it's Garcia that's taking the control. There's right foot outside the left foot of Gutierrez. Yes. You see it there, and that's yes. the key to it. Under a minute left here in round five. Again, the left to the body. It's not that these rounds were dominant, but you just feel like Arsu's doing enough to probably win them. Uh, we'll see. Maybe the judges see it differently. Jab is Garcia. Wow. Another double jab by Garcia. Very accurate with that jab. We talked about the 130 pound division. Here's our boxing historian, Steve Farhood.
Because you guys were right on about the 130 pound division. We take a look at the top. Established, no established champions at this weight. Cordina of Wales just recently crowned. Stevenson, he has two belts, but he's only made one defense so far. Gutierrez is making his second defense here tonight. As we take a look at the notable contenders at this weight, well, Colbert was supposed to be the next great thing, but he lost to Garcia. And there's some good fighters here, but not necessarily anyone who jumps out at you. Because Garcia could probably make the move all the way up to number two and contended a champion tonight, which is pretty impressive because only a few months ago, we never heard of him. Round six. And you referenced your Chris Stevenson before as, you know, uh, obviously a big game and a, and a dominant guy. He may move up to 135, so he may leave this division, uh, you know, in addition to all the other activities. Again, the double jab by Garcia. The thing that Garcia's done, I think, is vary his attack to the body and the head. Even yes. if everything doesn't land, he's giving a lot of looks to Gutierrez. And, and he's making the fight. He's controlling mm -hmm. the range. He's controlling the pace of the fight. I mean, he is the challenger. And he's got to show that to the judges. Raul, if you were in the corner of the champion, what would you be telling Roger Gutierrez? Please let your punches go. You're waiting too much. I don't know what he's waiting for. I thought, you know, he, he gets in really good precision, like I said, and mm -hmm. try to land that. It looks like he's trying to time that right hand and a left hook, but he's, he's waiting too much. He's got to let us, he's got to throw jabs. He's got to put his combinations together. You know, this is only the fourth fight for Garcia at 130 pounds. He moved up. He feels this is very much the best weight for him. Uh, so he did not, he's somewhat new to this division. And of course, he announced himself in a Colbert fight, obviously. But he's, he said, I like this division. I like where I'm at at 130 pounds. You see Gutierrez, he's moving. He's moving to his right. He's, he's moving right into to that left hand, huh? Left hand, he's yes, sir. Right into he's, he's, he's right hand. You better watch it. And the good thing about Garcia, he just doesn't throw one left hand. He, he changes yeah. it up. We've seen it all night long. To the body, to the chest. He's busy with that left hand. There you go. The left to the body. It's not as if Garcia is giving Gutierrez a ton of head movement or, or angles. He's kind of coming straight in, but still not able to, Gutierrez not able to counter him. And it's, this fight is not being fought at a very uh, quick pace, you know. There's, it, it, they're not throwing high volume, and, but Garcia is throwing a lot more than Gutierrez. And Garcia continues to stick with that jab. Mm -hmm. He's peppering away with the jab. <laughs> Missed with that left hand. But there's a one two. <laughs> well, look who we got sitting ringside talking about a champion. Here is Landy Lara. Two division world champ, ringside, taking in the action. One of the slickest boxers uh, in generations, huh? We saw him before our first fight of the night as we were going here, and I said hello to him. And so when we see you back in the ring, he said, I saw Danny Garcia. I would like that fight. Yeah, he's <laughs> been lobbying for that. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> We are in Hollywood, Florida, the Hard Rock Casino and Hotel. This is the WBA Super Featherweight title. The champion Roger Gutierrez taking on Hector Garcia. Brian Custer with Al Bernstein, Raul Marquez, Jim Gray, Steve Farhood. 
Jimmy Lennon Jr. here with you. Okay, so in his last fight, Gutierrez was down by several points against Rene Alvarado. He may be down by more than two points in this fight. We don't know, and of course the judges could be seeing it a little differently than us and Steve Farhood, but you feel like uh, Gutierrez better get on the stick. Well, we've come to the second half of this fight. Let's bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood. Cuss, with the exception of the, the exception of the first round, which I thought was close, but I did give to Garcia. It's been one-sided. I mean, I think if I say every round I have him after six rounds up, 60 to 54. Shout out to Hector Garcia so far on my card, Brian. Yeah, I got Garcia winning every round. Let's see if he picks up the pace here in the seventh. Now, when you were talking about Gutierrez and th those fights with uh, Rene Alvarado, mm -hmm. supposedly he said those those fights helped him grow. Yeah, mature. Yeah, helped his confidence. Yep. But I don't see no confidence yeah. here. Yeah, no, you're right. He, he did. He's and he not, felt that yeah, way. He's not letting those. Put, look, look, he's backing up. And he keeps getting hit. He's getting tattooed all over by that. It's man. been a, a, a very uneven effort at best by Gutierrez. I, and surprisingly so, really. You know, he's he, as you said, he's got a seven. You know, he's won seven fights in a row. He's, he's you know, he went on the seven fight win streak. He he's a fighter who's, you know, coming in here with a little bit of momentum. Uh, though the layoff certainly could be having yes. an impact on him. Yep, a year layoff, yeah. longest of his career. Had COVID. He said COVID had him down for yeah. a couple of weeks. Has to be that. I mean, he, he's he's not old. He's eight, 27 years no. old. He's a young he's guy. In his prime, yeah. And had been on fighting really, really well. And I, I really thought, among other things, this fight was going to provide more give and take between these two fighters. And the reason it hasn't is primarily because Gutierrez has been in a kind of a defensive posture. And there's finally the jab by Gutierrez. And one of the reasons Hector Garcia hasn't rushed in and hasn't tried to push this fight beyond where he's pushed it is, he knows that one Gutierrez right, right. hand can alter this fight. You're right. You're right about that, Alan. But I, I, I think, I still think Gutierrez, I think by now, Gutierrez, we're halfway, more than halfway oh, yeah. to the fight. He's not winning the fight, and look, he keeps getting hit by the left hand. And, I think he's in more in survival mode now. Like, I, uh, let me just go 12 rounds. Boy, it's way early for that, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Round eight. Stop, stop. Mm, Garcia came right after the champ. You know, Garcia had a six-week uh, camp for this. Obviously, a lot better than the two weeks he had to prepare for the Colbert fight. And he felt that's helped him, and so far it sure has. Raul, if you're in the corner there of Hector Garcia, and obviously he seems, it seems as if he's controlled this fight. Do you talk to him about turning up the pressure? If, if the champ's not going to do anything, do you say, hey, look, let's... I, I would, but very, you know, intelligent pressure, very careful coming in, a lot of head movement. And how about going more to the body mm. for Garcia? Go to the body and hit Gutierrez on the arms, too. Sometimes, you know, these younger fighters, they forget about hitting the arms. You know, you hit the arms for two or three solid rounds, they, those, those hands are going to fall. Those hands are going to fall. And those little gloves, they no joke. They, they hurt. Good body shot. Yeah, right, right, right the solar plex. Steve Farhood obviously feeling that Garcia continues to keep control of this fight. Unofficially, of course. Garcia, 10 years in the Dominican military, you alluded to that, Brian, and uh, that plus his amateur kept him, in, you know, out of the pro ranks until he was 25 years old, got a late start, but, you know, now at age 30, things are are coming into to focus for him as a professional and could be, could be on the verge of winning a world title. Absolutely. But a ways to go in this fight for sure. Anything it's just up can to happen. It takes yeah. one punch. It's up to Roger, Roger Gutierrez to oh. do that. There's a one-two by Garcia. 
minute left here in round eight. He needs more of those combinations, Garcia. Faster and, and, and explosive. Change the speeds of the combination. That's what I call it. There is another That's left it. hand. That's what I'm talking about. Then settle down and land the big bomb. Then go back to speed again. Gutierrez has thrown 17 punches in this round. Not much more from Garcia, but you know, Gutierrez is the one that really needs volume. Right. And now, now Garcia just taking control of this round. You can see, see the confidence yeah. now out of Garcia. Look at that. There's a left right on the button. Garcia. Body shot, a right to the body there by Garcia. He's in that shoulder roll, too. Left hand. Garcia returns with a right. Quick one, two at the bell by Hector Garcia. Hector Garcia using some excellent combination work. Now he's used the jab as a range finder. That one landed beautifully as the classic one-two combination. Uh, and mixed in during the course of that round were some right hooks as well. And later on in the round, we see the right hook starting off this combination. And there's, there's the hook after it. And that didn't land perfectly, but it did get there. And Great work by, by Hector Garcia, the 30-year-old. When you use that right, he goes back. If he keeps hitting you this way, then I'm going to stop the fight. You listen to me? You got to throw punches. Throw punches. Get closer. Let's go. Try it. Hey, that's good motivation. I'm going to stop the fight. That's going to make me throw punches. And you're the champion, too. Uh -huh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is round nine. Here's a three punch combination by Garcia. Ended it with the, the right to the body. You know, this is puzzling because Gutierrez, I mentioned the seven fight win streak. Uh, you know, the, the, the rough, tough fights against Alvarado. It's just surprising that his efforts have been so flat here tonight, oh, he even put, with the layoff. Yeah, Garcia's putting some leather now in these punches now. He's putting some oomph in him. This is starting to become target practice for Hector Garcia. To the body, into the head. Finally, Gutierrez returns the right hand, but an uppercut by the challenger. And the geography of this round favors Garcia. He's on the inside, inside where Gutierrez could land a big right. Here's a right by Gutierrez. This has actually been maybe the best round of the fight for Garcia, as good as some of the others have been. Mm -hmm. There's a right hook to the body by Garcia. Then comes upstairs. He has to watch that right hand. Look at these hooks. Yeah, but I agree, Garcia. Gutierrez is trying to get that right hand in and got one in there. I think Garcia's activity is making the yes. Gutierrez finally throw that. Go for broke. Gutierrez right. uncorking the right hand. Garcia coming back with combination punches. Minute here in round nine. And forth we go here. Man, Garcia's trying to close the show. The champion mm. lets his hands go. This is what we thought this fight was going to be. Thirty seconds left. There's a right hand by Gutierrez. Double right hook by Garcia. Another right hook. Side of the face of the champion. Oh. 
Sienta, sienta, sienta la guardia. Roger, this round we got to win it this way. This is right. You got to make the combination, okay? Just do the combination. Keep close, get the guard up, and then you start hitting. When you get close to the, to the uh, body, you're doing good work because he's getting tired. Now you got to hit him. Hit him with, the, with everything. Don't give him that title. He wants that title. Don't give it to him. That one you won. That round you won. So keep going. That's the way you have to fight. That's the way you have to fight. It's not going to lose it. You got to really go strong and tire him out with the body work. I guess you got to infuse confidence in your fighter. <laughs> yeah, we the might trainer. debate whether he won that round, but the trainer definitely has the, the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a round in which Gutierrez landed more punches than he has in any other round, but he took a lot. But it, as you Raul pointed out, it, he was forced into that by Garcia. So he's going to probably tell himself, why did it take me nine rounds to start fighting? And there were a couple of nice right hands mixed in for Gutierrez. Could he land one that would hurt Garcia? That would be, it seems, essential for him. Here's a straight left hand by Garcia. Yeah, Gutierrez had him against the ropes momentarily. And neither fighter has gone to the ropes much, even including Gutierrez. Oh, nice right by Gutierrez. Here's the uncorks the right hand. Garcia comes back with three punches, and here comes the champion. This is a heck of a round. Another uncorked right hand by Gutierrez. He is known for comebacks. Yes, he Gutierrez is. Gutierrez is trying to make it happen, but Garcia, Garcia won't go away. Yeah, he just flipped the script. Landed three straight punches. This is definitely the best round Gutierrez has had in the whole nine rounds, the whole ten rounds. He seemed to find a home with that right hand over the top. Minute here around ten. And you know, Garcia squaring himself up a little bit and allowing those right hands to get in by Gutierrez. Ooh, there's a left to the body by Garcia. Wow, this is a, a really competitive and fun round. Back and forth. Here's a left of the body again by Garcia. And he steps around. Here's that right hand over the top. Final 10 seconds of the 10th round. That was fun. In what, as Raul pointed out, was certainly the best round Gutierrez has had in this fight. There's one of the right hands, and there's another one. That second right, maybe the best he's landed in this fight. And there were a number of them in that round. Now, Garcia did very good work as well, and we'll get a peek at that. Uh, he, he did some excellent work, especially when he was on the inside. Slipping the, the, the right hand of uh, Gutierrez and then coming back with his own straight and nice combination budget. Not everything got in for Garcia in that sequence, but he did land some good shots in that round, but it may well have been the first round Gutierrez won. Your condition, excellent. It could be a cut there on the left ear of the champions. We enter the championship rounds. 
Roger Gutierrez, second defense of his WBA 130-pound title against the unbeaten challenger Hector Garcia. Gutierrez has been 12 rounds two times before. He is 2-0. Garcia has been there once, the win over Colbert. I think it's best that Garcia boxes Gutierrez in this mm -hmm. 11th round. Because you know Gutierrez is going to bring it in that last round, so. Here's a right hand. Couple of punches against the rope by Gutierrez. As he peppers the body of Garcia. You hit it, Raul. You see how Steve Farhood said, yeah. the champ. Yeah, I, I gave him that round, too. That's the only round I've given him. The last two rounds of this fight have been really entertaining. With Here's that right action. hand. Oh. Garcia can't allow himself to get trapped on the ropes. Where's Gutierrez getting all this energy yeah. out, out of nowhere? All of a sudden. I guess good preparation. Maybe he's getting his second wind. I don't know, but that, he, look, and he's, he's challenging yeah, him. Yeah, he did. Like, come, come on, on, let's get it. Mano, mano, vamonos. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I got you. Well, Roger Gutierrez has always been a warrior. We've seen it. We saw those blood and guts fights with Rene Alvarado, who's a tough customer. One heck of a trilogy they had. Mm. You know, see a jabbery emerges. Yes. And then the left to the body. Oh, oh. there's a left hook by Gutierrez. And right hand. And another right hand by the champion. Not, not a good thing. Look at Garcia backing up with his chin up in the air. Still countering, though. This is, again, competitive and ultra entertaining. Back and forth they go. Double jab right hand by the champ. Watch your head. Here's the right again by Gutierrez. Left one by Garcia. Well, Roger Gutierrez is known for coming back in, in the later rounds, and boy, he's done it here. Uh, there's one of the straight right hands that he landed in the last round. He's also a great left hook as part of it, and later on in the round, he continued to push Garcia back, had him on the ropes, and he'll get a right hand. Well, there's Garcia actually countering with the, the right hook, and Garcia did some good work in that round for sure, so there was a lot of give and take in the round, but Gutierrez seemed to push the pace and land the bigger punches. Twelfth and final round. Over a thousand punches have been thrown. Roger Gutierrez making the second defense of his title. Hector Garcia unbeaten. Looking to become just the fourth Dominican fighter to win a title at 130 pounds. What started out as a slow-paced affair in the last three rounds has become anything but. And it seems here, please our Steve Farhood, Gutierrez, the champion, picking up steam, but maybe a little bit too late. And a lot will depend on how those early rounds were scored. Good work by Garcia there. Hey, all it takes is one shot, and if Gutierrez could land a perfect mm. right hand. He's both connected there. Yeah. When Garcia backs up with his chin up in the air. Mm. And he's got him against the ropes now. 
Garcia spent a fair amount of time against the ropes in the last few rounds. Yeah, he, he needs to hold him, walk up to the center of the ring, yeah. hold him. I mean, he's, in my opinion, he's got the fight won, but again, you never know. Where was this volume from Gutierrez for all those rounds? Mm -hmm. In the last two rounds, he's right. thrown more, he's landed more. It's just, and he is a second half fighter, but he waited a long time. You're right, Al. Even if he would have done that in the yeah. second half of the fight, started earlier, not in the ninth round, maybe the sixth or seventh round. Yep. It would have been a big difference because I'll tell you what, Garcia, he's tired now. Yeah, and that's what happened in the Alvarado fight. About round six is when he really picked up and did enough to win all those rounds. One minute left in this fight. Will Gutierrez keep his title? Or will Garcia take his strap and make some history? Garcia is still trying to land it straight left, and it's gotten a few in. And there's where he should have held. Right, Raul? Yes. Tie him up. You got to let 25 seconds tie the guy up. Yeah. Here's the final 20. Combination by Garcia. Uppercut. Right hook. Gutierrez misses with the left hook. And that's the fight. What a big turnaround on this fight. <laughs> the last three round four, I mean, it, it was a fight. Bob Santos and Hector Garcia believe that the early work Clearly, they believe that's earned him the victory. We don't know that, but yeah. we'll see. This championship fight, the Venezuelan champion, the Dominican challenger, it is now in the hands of the three judges. Gutierrez with a seven fight win streak on the line and more than that, a title. Let's go inside the ropes to look at this, what turned into an intriguing matchup. Early on in the fight, it was just steady as you go for Garcia, landing these double left, straight lefts a lot, and had good moments in the early rounds. They weren't super dominant rounds, but he did work just like this, with a variety of punches, you know, landing hooks on the inside and the straight left hand, and very much using his jab, but Gutierrez was able to come back in the later rounds and do this, put Garcia on the ropes, land some really good right hands, and they created a lot of good two-way action in a number of those later rounds. But it was Gutierrez who landed power punches and may have taken some later rounds. Did he win enough? And the numbers certainly interesting because we saw that Garcia had once had a much bigger edge in terms of what was landed and what was thrown. But the, as the rounds, those last rounds happened, uh, Gutierrez was able to uh, get the margin down within reason. And guess what? Guess what? Garcia normally lands 43% of his power punches, only 35% tonight, but a lot of them. Well, fans, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judges at ringside, Alexander Levin and Michael Ross both scored about 117 to 111. Judge Frederick Flutie sees it 118 to 110. All three in favor of the winner. And the new WBA Super Featherweight Champion of the World. Garcia, the first of the Dominican Republic fighters looking for a championship, is gets it tonight, and he'll talk to Jim Gray.
All right, Brian, thank you very much. Hector, congratulations. Felix de Jesus will translate for us. How would you describe this journey? You had 300 amateur fights. You were in the military for 10 years. You went from unranked to a mandatory to a champion. ¿Cómo tú no puedes decir lo que tú has durado para ser campeón? 300 peleas de amateur, 10 años en la policía, en el, en el militar. Eh, cuéntanos. Bueno, uh, era justo que Dios me mandara este día porque ha sido mucho sacrificio, como ya acaba de decir, muchos años detrás de la oportunidad. Y de verdad me siento muy agradecido con la compañía PBC, Luis de Cuba Junior, I Heimo, que me ha dado todo el apoyo. Me dieron la oportunidad y la he aprovechado al máximo. No, that definitely it was just. This is the day that God gave me the chance to win this title. I want to thank the people that are here also, Luis de Cuba, PBC, Al Heyman, for this opportunity tonight. Such a big night for the Dominican Republic. What do you think this will mean for the folks back home? ¿Qué significa esto para la República Dominicana esta victoria? Bueno, primero significó mucho para mí porque ha sido mucho sacrificio. Después se lo dedico a toda mi República Dominicana, especial a San Juan de la Maguana, mi pueblo natal, que me están viendo en pantalla gigante. First of all, uh, for me, the victory was very important for me. Second, for my country, for Dominican Republic, and the city of San Juan de la Maguana, where I'm from, where they saw this uh, in the big screen. Can you describe and tell us how you came up with these two performances tonight against Roger Colbert last time to literally almost come out of nowhere and now to have this title? Vidiste de la nada, le ganaste a Chris Colbert de gran manera y ahora también le gana a Guiterres de esta manera. ¿De dónde sacaste esto? Nadie te conocía. Bueno, eh, en, en, en profesional nadie me conocía, pero en aficionado tuve una buena trayectoria, excelente. Incluso fui al Juego Olímpico, que era mi sueño, obtener una medalla olímpica. Pues. Lo que único esperaba era la oportunidad. Estaba mucho tiempo detrás de ella, se me dio y la supe aprovechar. Yeah, professionally, a lot of people didn't know me, but they did know me in the amateurs and they did know me in the Olympics. That's where they knew who Hector Garcia was. You, you seem to dominate this fight until the last three rounds. You get concerned at all as he mounted a comeback and he's known Roger for comebacks. Estaba dominando, pero los últimos tres asaltos, eh, Roger vino con bastante fuerza. ¿Tenía preocupaciones que tal vez no iba a ganar la pelea? Bueno, no tenía preocupación de lo que él sí estaba buscando era un golpe para ganar la pelea, pero yo supe dominarlo y así pudimos salir con la victoria. Yeah, I was looking for that super punch, that thing that might have knocked him down the last three rounds. It wasn't there, so at the end we won the fight. Congratulations, world champion Hector Garcia. Okay, gracias y gracias a todo mi equipo de trabajo por el sacrificio, el empeño. Vos Santos, Richard, eh, Black Capino. Carlos en el gimnasio. Gracias Richard porque me dio la oportunidad de entrar a su campamento. Hicimos un gran trabajo para obtener esta victoria. I want to thank Richard and all my team, Bob, and everybody that had to do with it, especially him who gave me the opportunity to be in this training camp.